I expect that you probably don't spend your days in loose sleep at night thinking about cleaning. And it's forgivable because you know what? That's my job. So in this video, I'm gonna go over 10 of the biggest cleaning mistakes that I hear people making, and I'm gonna to explain to you from an expert who does think about cleaning 24 seven standpoint, how to not make those mistakes anymore. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel, and give this video a thumbs up if you have a hard time admitting when you make a mistake. There are many rules and regulations that companies have to abide by when they put out a cleaning product. Plus, they wanna make sure that when you receive it, you're actually using it in the way that they intended for you to use. And what that means is that's the way that they formulated it and the way that they've tested it. So companies can't be held responsible if someone uses their product incorrectly and it ruins something. So if you pick up a new cleaning product or something that you're a little bit unfamiliar with, it is worthwhile to just flip over the bottle or the package, quickly read the instructions and make sure you understand where you're supposed to use it and how you're supposed to use it. That way you won't be at risk of ruining any surfaces or spending extra time cleaning something that you wouldn't otherwise have to had you let the product do the work for you. Especially around cold and flu season, it, there seems to be this panic around disinfecting everything. And I need to tell you guys, everything need not be disinfected in your home. If you're in a public space like a hospital, a mall, an amusement park, a school, things like that, yes, proper disinfection methods must be done. They have to use very specific products and follow very specific protocols because they're managing the public's health. When you are at home, in your own space, with your own germs, aside from things that come in like a cold, a cough, a flu, something like that, where you will do special cleaning for that to get rid of it, or if there's an accident, say a cat throws up, or a child does something in the corner that shouldn't have happened in that corner, sure, you can clean it up uh, using proper disinfection methods, but on a regular basis, soap and water is gonna do the trick. If not soap, you can use vinegar. You can get rid of most stains and dirt using very basic things. And that's what cleaning is all about. Disinfecting, on the other hand, is killing harmful bacteria. But remember, our bodies need a lot of bacteria so that we can stay healthy. So you don't wanna kill everything. Unless there's a germ that's come into your home and gotten everybody sick, yeah, go ahead, bring out the disinfectant. Or if there's meat juice on your kitchen counter, you're gonna need the disinfectant. Everything else, soap and water, a little bit of vinegar, whatever have you, that should solve the problem. Before I got into the cleaning world, I had no plans when it came to cleaning. I would just go into a room and then start cleaning things randomly. I'd spend so much time, I'd leave more frustrated than when I started and my results were terrible. This is one of the reasons why I tell you guys I hated to clean because I just didn't know how to do it. Once I got into cleaning, started the business and started doing these videos, I realized that understanding how to clean and then having a cleaning plan, which is what I now call my three wave system. If you guys have been watching Clean My Space for a while or you've read my book, you know all about the three wave system. But essentially it tells you to have a method to your cleaning madness. Once you nail those three waves and you repeat them and you get familiar with them enough times in your home or in the spaces that you're cleaning, it will totally change the way that you clean. No more will you be approaching a room with frustration and sadness. You'll be approaching it with meaning. You'll get your cleaning done quickly. You won't waste time and your results will be better. This is one that really gets my blood boiling because I see a lot of stuff going on online, on Instagram, where people are sharing these cleaning hacks. When in reality, a lot of us who don't understand how to clean something properly in the first place, rely upon the cleaning hack to solve the cleaning problem. Really, the approach should be you should know how to clean something properly and then you should find a way to hack it or do it quicker or easier, which is really what a hack is. If you approach something with the hack mentality first and foremost and you look for a shortcut, you're never gonna get the results that you want. Rather, if you know how to clean something and then you look for ways to shave time off or find a more efficient way to do it or a more efficient product or tool, that indeed is a cleaning hack and that will save you time. When I read your comments, especially on our bathroom cleaning videos, there are often questions about how long to spend cleaning a bathroom or I'll read what some of you guys do when you are cleaning your bathroom 
and I hate to say it, but I think sometimes you're over cleaning. And that's actually a good thing because I'm giving you permission to do less work. There you go, you can have it. The most important thing is to know how to clean your bathroom. And we have lots of videos on that topic. I will link a few of them, the real good ones for you down below. So you can check them out and you can refine your methods and your techniques. But essentially, you don't have to go in with the heavy duty products and the rubber gloves and the mask and the this and the that and the disinfectant and the killers. Like you don't have to do all of that business to clean your bathroom each and every time. Because remember, it's not like you're getting sick and doing your business all over the floors and the counters and in the sink and in the shower. You're really not. Uh, it's just more a matter of managing the soap scum that builds up in your shower and your tub, making sure that you're disinfecting very specific areas in the bathroom and that you're shining and polishing things. And once you have that in place, so you're not panicking about the germs and over cleaning the bathroom, you can actually relax a bit and spend less time doing the dirty work. Now, stainless steel is sort of like skin. If you abrade it, it's going to get scratched. The difference is our skin heals, stainless steel will not. There are ways that you can repair stainless steel. In fact, you can get stainless steel repair kits online. It's pretty straightforward to do once you have the materials in hand. But why? Why would you go out of your way to scratch your stainless steel only to have to repair it? What a waste of time. Just don't use anything abrasive. What I used, duh, what I, in, in the past, because I don't do it anymore, I used a microfiber cloth, generally just all-purpose cleaner or a little bit of vinegar or every now and then some rubbing alcohol, got my marks out and I was good to go. I wanna make a distinction here. There is a big difference between masking an odor and killing the odor causing bacteria at the source. Masking the odor is putting on deodorant. Killing the bacteria at the source is taking a shower and cleaning under your arms. Imagine if you decided to never take a shower again and instead just use deodorant all the time. That's exactly what people do when they're using air fresheners or fabric refreshers in lieu of cleaning a surface for a prolonged period of time. Now, if you're using it every now and again, that's one thing. If you're using it because you walk into a room and you feel like there's this smell and I can never get rid of it, so I'll just spray this thing and hopefully the smell will go away, that's where you're making your cleaning mistake. Instead, you have to find the source of the odor causing bacteria, whether it's a piece of upholstery, a pair of shoes, an old rug, whatever it is that's causing the odors, and generally it's a soft surface. Although it could be, you know, something that's spilled in your kitchen, like sour milk under your refrigerator. You have to find the cause of that odor. You have to clean that odor, and then you won't have that smell anymore. When companies market appliances, cleaning appliances like dishwashers, vacuum cleaners, or washers and dryers, they are marketed to perform all kinds of different cleaning tasks that will save us so much time and so much effort and so much cleaning pain. But you know what? If we're not reading the manuals and figuring out how to use those appliances, we might as well not spend the money and get the most basic ones. Because frankly, if you're not sure how to activate the turbocharged washing power on your dishwasher or how to get that sanitary cycle going in your washing machine, why bother having the function? The, the reason these companies have designed these extra features for you is so that you can use them and clean less. They're doing us a favor, but we have to be complicit in this relationship as well. We have to read those manuals and figure out how to make these machines hum for us. So if you are not 100% acquainted with your washer, dryer, vacuum cleaner, or dishwasher, do yourself a favor, get the model number, go online, Find your manual. I just had to do this for my dishwasher when we filmed the how to clean your dishwasher video last week. Figure out exactly how your appliance works and go to town. I've said it once and I'll say it again. All cleaning products are not created equal. And even though I talk so frequently about using an all-purpose cleaner because it is kind of this general salve for cleaning, it can't actually do everything. It can't be everything to everybody all the time. There are specialty products that exist or different cleaning recipes if you're into the DIY thing, which you probably are because you like Clean My Space. There are different recipes for, and different products for different things. And if you use an all-purpose cleaner on a surface where say you're trying to clean glass and get rid of streaks, the all-purpose cleaner is actually gonna put soap on a very reflective surface where you're gonna really struggle getting that glass clean. So if you don't understand what the product's intended use is, 
you're gonna actually struggle with getting your surface cleaned properly. And in some very rare cases, you can even damage a surface if you're using an all-purpose cleaner where you shouldn't be. For example, a leather couch that's unfinished. Please, don't ever do that. Make sure, or, or untreated wood, same thing. Make sure that any surface that you're cleaning, you understand what the limitations are, and what you need to clean that surface effect, effectively and efficiently. I was gonna say effectively, which is not a word. Don't even look it up. Now you're 10 tips closer to achieving expert status in your cleaning. And that brings me to this week's comment question, which is, when you've cleaned in the past, what have you damaged because you've cleaned? I will tell you guys, because I'm honest and I have no problem saying it, when I first started cleaning, one of the mistakes I made, and this was in my home, so don't worry, was I moved a piece of furniture when I was cleaning the floor without having casters or felt sliders on the bottom, and I scratched the wood. Womp womp, it sucked. But you know what, it was a reminder, it was a battle scar. And now, I don't make that mistake anymore. So let me know in the comments down below what cleaning mistake what damage have you caused because of your cleaning? If you wanna see what we're up to during the rest of the week, you should follow along on Instagram. I'm at Melissa Maker, Chad is at the Chad Reynolds, and the two of us in all our insanity is at Clean My Space. Here are a couple of other videos I think you're going to love, and if you wanna learn more about Maker's Clean Microfiber Cloths, you can click this button right over there. There is a button down there that lets me know you care, so click it if you liked this video, and click this button right here to subscribe and begin your journey to a cleaner life. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.